DNA, DNA, DNA. Everybody's talking about it. What can it do for you? And more importantly, what can't it do for you? I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics. We're gonna talk about DNA. So, you've tested, and you have this great big file of A's, C's, T's, G's, and you have no idea what to do with it, and you don't know what any of it means. That's okay. There's a lot of people that don't have any idea what it means, and that's why we have computers, to help us tell what all those A's, C's, T's, and G's mean together. But once you've tested, it's important to understand what DNA can tell you, and also what it can't tell you. Let's start with the negatives first. One thing DNA testing is not going to do is it's not going to magically build a tree for you. If you test through any of the major companies, they're not going to automatically populate your tree with all of your ancestors. It just can't be done. Now maybe if we get all seven and a half billion people in the world, then we might be able to crunch some numbers and actually build a family tree, sort of. But probably not. So it's not going to build your tree for you. If you want to build a tree, you're going to have to do some work yourself. DNA is just one small part of that. The next thing that DNA can't do is it can't tell you who all of your ancestors are. If you watch some of my other videos, particularly the one about Charlemagne, you'll find out that you're only genetically related to 120 people. What that means is that DNA could only tell you information about 120 people in any given generation. Now, with most of your recent generations, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents, there's a lot less than 120 people. So you're genetically related to all of them. So DNA is going to tell you something about each one of those people. But once you get past the sixth and the seventh generation, there's more than 120 people in that generation. And so DNA is only going to tell you about a small portion of them. And each generation further and further back, it's a smaller and smaller and smaller portion. So, DNA is not going to tell you about all of your ancestors. There's a lot of your ancestors you're going to have to find by using paper records. Third, DNA can't pinpoint where you're from. Now, there may be some companies that say that they can tell you exactly where you're from by analyzing your DNA, but in reality, you can't. And that's because we humans have been intermarrying and interbreeding all over the place. We like to interbreed. Some people think that we don't, but we have for hundreds and thousands of years. And so our DNA is all mixed up. Now that gets us to the first thing that DNA can tell you. It can tell roughly where some of your ancestors are. Remember, you're only genetically related to 120 people, so it can tell you, hey, you have a good portion of ancestors that are from Europe, or you have a good portion that are from Africa. Maybe even something as specific as Scandinavia. But probably it's never going to tell you the little town in Scandinavia that your ancestors are from. So it can tell you some general geographic areas. Where could this be helpful? Maybe you focused on ancestors that are from a certain place because that's all you knew about. Say, England. All of your ancestors that you knew about were from England. Well, what happens when you do DNA testing and you find out, hey, you actually have some DNA that's from India. Well, that's interesting. You may have an ancestor that married a real Indian princess. Not the Native American Indian princess, but the India Indian princess. Something else that DNA can tell you is it can tell you who your close relations are absolutely. And this is important because paper records can be forged, people can lie on them, People can make mistakes. There's been a lot of studies done to determine what percentage of fathers on a birth certificate are the actual biological father of those children. And those studies have shown anywhere from 1%, 2% all the way up to as much as 10%. Think about that. As much as 10% of the fathers listed on birth certificates aren't the biological father? Well, DNA can tell you for sure if your father is your biological father, as well as if your mother is your biological mother. Not only that, it can tell you your grandparents, if they really are your grandparents, if you have them tested as well as yourself. It can tell you about your siblings, whether they're your full siblings or even a half sibling. It can tell you aunts and uncles and your first cousins 
with certainty that they're related to you or that they're not related to you or they're only half related to you. So for close relations within two or three generations, DNA can tell you with certainty that those relations are accurate. What it can also tell you is further relations, your fifth, sixth, and seventh generations out, probably who some of those people are. Now, why it can tell who some of those are and why it's not as accurate as your close relations has to do with how DNA gets transferred down to people. DNA is transferred from your mother and your father to yourself, and they got theirs from their mother and father. And what happens is DNA breaks apart and recombines so that you are a mix of both your parents and you're a mix of all four of your grandparents. As you go further and further back generations, that's going to be smaller and smaller segments that you share with these other people. Sometimes you share segments with people just by chance because there's a lot of similarities between all of us. And so you may not be related to them, at least any recent relation, but by chance you happen to have the same little segment of DNA and it might show that, yeah, you're seventh or eighth cousins based off of this when you're really not. So DNA can tell you some of your, long, your distant relations in the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth generations. Now another thing DNA can tell you a little about is about yourself. If you've tested with 23andMe or if you've used a website like Promethease, they can analyze your DNA and be able to tell you everything from eye color to what your skin type is to different health aspects of yourself. And that's all coded in your DNA. And it's actually pretty amazing. On GEDmatch, they have a app that looks at your DNA and makes an estimate about what your eye color look like. Now, growing up, I'd always thought that eye color was just a simple thing. I have green eyes. My wife has hazel eyes. My dad has blue eyes. Well, once you actually get down to it, your eye color is this amazing assortment of all sorts of different things. There's rings, there's flecks, there's you know striations all throughout it, where what you thought was just green eyes might actually be green eyes with a gray ring with gold flecks. And your DNA tells you that. So there's a lot of great things that DNA can tell you just about yourself, as well as help you with your genealogy. This is Family History Fanatics. If you have more questions about DNA, write them down below. We'll try to do a video on them and help answer your questions.